life as we know it. But first, the joke. <laughs> Three sons get together to do something for their aging mother. The first one builds her a house, big house. The second one buys her this really fancy car. And the third one says, well, she's kind of going blind. So I, she's having, tr and she loves the Bible. So I got her a parrot that could repeat to her all her favorite Bible verses. And so a few weeks pass and they get a letter and the letter says to the first son, you know, the house you got me is way too big. And to the second son, the car you got me is way too fast. And to the third son, son, what you got me was perfect. The chicken was delicious. <laughs> Life as we know it. So this talk has evolved in, the, in, in a way that has been fascinating to me as I continued to think. Because really, I came up with the title originally based on an old REM song, The End of the World as We Know It. And I thought, and so that was where I was going with it for starters, was to talk to you about all the ways in which life goes along, we think we know it, and then it changes really dramatically. But then I thought, really, what this is about is evolution, our own personal evolution, and how much we either get in the way or don't get in the way of that. So for instance, um, as some of you know, we have a new, I've written a new script in which we're gonna start filming in February. And that script started out, my original idea for the script was to write a story about a minister who's, who, who starts diving down into, uh, you know, who gives up his integrity for this other vision that he thinks he wants. That was the original idea, which is why I called it originally Selling Your Soul. So I started writing the script based on that idea. Now, many times in our lives, we start out with a particular idea. We take a few steps, it, we get this idea in our heads of what it is we wanna do. And then we take a few steps towards that but then something happens. Now, for some people, they say, they think when something happens, that means what they wanted wasn't meant to be, or it was meant to be different, or it was meant to be this, instead of looking at it and going, wait, there's an evolution here. And my starting point was a great starting point because now it's going to evolve. And so in the script I was writing, one of the first evolution of it was let's have this guy, this minister, you know, be all for and be a huge support for the LGBTQ community and same sex marriage and get hired by a church that does not condone it. And so now I have what it is he's going to walk down that devil's path basically, and I'm saying something that really has a lot of meaning to me in terms of discrimination. And so that was its evolution. And so we walk down, you know, maybe you have something in your life where you've walked down that road. It didn't turn out at first the way you wanted to, but instead of thinking about it as an evolution, or maybe you did, maybe you thought there's something divine in this. There's something that's leading me to something greater because that is what we teach here, right? What it is we teach is when we run into those, what we might see as obstacles is that they actually have something for us to learn so that we can become the greater beings we came here to be and create from that greater place. And so I'm walking down this road with this script that now has this part in it and wrote and then from that point wrote out the whole thing and my first draft of it, my second draft, my third draft, my fourth draft my fifth draft, my sixth draft, 
got to a place of where he gets fired, finally stands up, you know, goes down that road, buys into the big house, the big church, the TV, all the people he's got, and finally realizes it's not worth selling his integrity for, so he gets fired. And, and that was a very, you know, nice, you know, that was, a, that was an interesting way to go with that story. And, and maybe that's what happens for you in your life when you're walking down a particular road trying to do something. Then things start working out a little bit. They start coming into focus. And it's nice, but it isn't great. And for many people, that place where it gets to nice is good enough, and they settle when there's something larger urging you on. Because one of the things I've noticed about my life, and which is what makes me so sure it's true about yours, is we're not here to settle. Because we only get a blip. You know, when it comes to the infinite amount of time that the universe has, ours in these bodies is a blip. And so I ask you, do you really want to settle? Do you really want to think this is good enough when there's something divine in you, urging you on, and you can feel it, right? You feel that urging, and then you go, no, no. You, you know, your logical mind kicks in and goes, no, 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 no. No, it's good enough. This is, I got it good here. I got it good. I don't need it better. I got it good here. But then you feel that urging. And for many, they wind up squashing it down. And what I'm hoping is, is that I'm with a group of people here who want more. You know, who want to answer that urging, even if it's scary. Because it's not like it isn't, right? Right? If you got it good and you're being urged on to something better and going on to something better may mean giving up what you had that was good, that can be scary. And yet, you're only here for a blip. We're all going to the same place, which is leaving this body. Why not take the chance? Given the only thing you got going is the same ending we all have together, which is lead, transitioning out of these bodies, why not go for the gold? Yes? So I had a good script, and people are telling me it's a good script, and we start working on it, but something is urging me on. You know, I got that feeling inside me. It just isn't there yet. It's just not there yet. And so I kept working it and I kept working it and it just wasn't popping. And I was getting a little frustrated about the thing. And, and Ash is saying, why are you getting frustrated with this? You have a good script. And, but I felt that urging and, and I know that urging well enough to know I got to keep going, whatever it goes. And, and Ash, she's great when it comes to that kind of support. So she's like, OK, keep going, whatever it is, follow it, keep going. And so, you know, uh, so one of the things that for me starts happening when I get into that space is I stop sleeping. And I'm up in the middle of the night. And so then it's like, oh, my God, am I Im impacting my health? You know, that's the scary thing that starts coming up is now, I, for me, is I start thinking, now that I'm in this creative space that I'm no longer sleeping, you know, uh, how is this going to impact my health? And if it impacts my health, how is it going to impact how I am at the center with everything else that needs to go on here and everything else in my life, which was going really well? And so how am I going to keep all that going if I'm not sleeping? And so these teachings are great when that kind of stuff comes up because then I just got to dive down going, all is well. 
You know, since this is happening, since I've got the urge, since this divine nature is pushing me on, there must be something here. Let me keep going. Let me be with this. Let me allow the unfoldment of it and know that I'm going to be okay. Even though it doesn't look like it when in the morning I'm yawning before I even get here. And so... All of a sudden, one night about 2 and 2 a.m., it hits me to kill off the minister. <laughs> that if the minister dies, gets killed for his beliefs, that is a strong raising of the stakes and, and, may, and enough to where I can then have the biggest uh, uh, opponent to same-sex marriage, take a look at herself in this and begin to see that maybe she was wrong and maybe there is something to being a Christian that has to do with love, not hate or discrimination. And now, instead of people telling me that my script is good, they're telling me, whoa, wow, that's powerful. All of a sudden now, I have people coming out of the woodwork to volunteer. I have got a bigger crew now than I've got a cast who wants to volunteer their time just to be a part of this script because they're, they're, they're so moved by it. All of a sudden, there's all this energy and action going on that I have never felt around. We've done over 40 movies here, and this is the first time, first one, where every, the kind of, I, I'm, I got a call yesterday. Uh, so, so we got a, a director of photographer who now has a ca camera operator under her, who now has an assistant camera operator under her, and they want to all come here to just play with the equipment to make sure that they're really solid on it before we start shooting February 11th and they called me I didn't call them and they're like we need to work with this we want to make sure we have this flat and I'm like whoa because I didn't settle I didn't see this around the corner I wasn't looking at if I make this script good enough then all these people will stand up and want to help and do all this that I never even thought about that I just kept being urged on and was willing to go with those urges, no matter how much it looked like it might pain me to do so. And that's the thing about this, is the divine nature of life wants you to explode, wants you to shine want you to be something you never even imagined yourself being. The divine in you is constantly to your last breath in that body, urging you on to something greater. It's going to be different for each and every one of you. There's no telling what it is, but if you're willing to get quiet enough to feel the urging, the nudging, it's there. It has to be, because that's life itself. Life as we know it, whatever we think we know, it's more. There's more going on all the time. I have gotten to a place in my life where I open, go, okay, there's more, show me. Please, I'm ready. I want to see it. There are times when um, I feel in a bind. I feel like I'm stuck in a corner. Like nothing's moving, nothing's working. And I have learned that when I feel that way, I remember one of my favorite quotes is, when you feel at the end of your rope, let go. When you feel you're at the end of your rope, let go. And so I do that time and time and time again. When I feel that bind, when I feel like I'm stuck in a corner, when I feel like I'm at the end of my rope, 
I go, okay, I'm letting go. What happens next? And when I first started doing that, I was scared to death. You know, it's like jumping into a pool without checking to see if there's water. But time and time again, I did not crash. Time and time again, even if it looked like I crashed, something came out of it that was better. I was thinking about, um, for those of you who don't know, I've been divorced three times. And my first divorce happened in my 20s. And I lost my job, which wasn't much of a job, I was just waiting tables, uh, because I was positive I was gonna be a rock and roll star. At the same time that my ex and I separated and I wound up homeless. I wound up sleeping on a park bench in December in New York City. It was very cold. And I was out there for a while. It was not fun. And I thought, because I had never heard of this teaching, that this was the end of me. I thought I was just going to die on one of those benches. Fast forward to my third divorce, and I'm looking back over my life going, I got a pattern going here that needs changing. And so, and part of that pattern was, is when we separated, I lost my job, so I didn't have any money. And, but I knew, because at that point I'd been through these teachings, was already up to being a practitioner, that things were gonna work out great for me, that somehow since this is happening, something was gonna happen here that was way greater than I could possibly know. And the next thing I know, because I, I see the pattern and I'm thinking, I got to heal this, so I need to find myself alone. I see an ad in the newspaper for a cabin in the woods in trade for fixing it up. And having done a lot of carpentry in my life, I was like, that's for me and my dog. I had a dog at the time too, just like I do now. Dog at that time was a little bigger. Anyway, we go into this cabin in the woods and I wasn't there a week at the time I, my big job was uh, computer programming before I got a call for a job that covered me for the next year and a half. Because I knew, really different from the first time when I didn't know and I had all that fear and I was throwing out all those thoughts that of course wound me up on a park bench because I didn't know any better about how to think about my life to have it turn out any different. Now this last time I didn't wind up on a park bench, I didn't wind up cold. I wound up in a really nice cabin in the woods that I got to make nicer. And I was out there almost three years working on myself making sure I didn't repeat that pattern again, and I believe I did not. <laughs> but it took the work of knowing that there's something more going on here, that I'm being urged forward. I mean, you know, I could have come out of that third divorce blaming my, wife, my ex again, and then been up here talking about six divorces, right? Having never learned the lesson. But because I'd been through these teachings, I got to see that life as I know it isn't about somebody else being to blame for my patterns. Would I create my life? And that there's something here urging me on to learn better, to learn different, to grow from this. And finally, 
not being the brightest guy on the block, I finally caught on and started to learn. I finally took it in, took my time in the woods, didn't date, didn't date for almost two years. Just sat out there with my dog and we'd walk in the woods and do my computer programming and started ministerial school. That's where I started ministerial school. Because I knew I could feel the urging and I, by this point I was ready that if I got that urging, I'm following it. If I feel back in a corner, I'm letting go and letting the divine show me the way. And it does. Life as we know it, don't get caught in what you think is concrete here. This is all malleable. This is all changing all the time. We have some, there's something so much greater going on for each of us. And that urging never quits. I want you to know that the universe never stops expanding because you got old or you think you're stuck or you think you can't do the next thing you want to do. The universe is continuing to expand. And because of that, it's expanding in you. It's nudging you to expand, to be more, to grow, to look at whatever's next for you to feel, to be, to have, to know, to contribute to the world. You know, there isn't a single person on this planet who cannot contribute if they so choose. A little baby is born, contributes from the second it takes its first breath because of the smile it brings to his parents' face. We are all here to contribute. It's actually our birthright. And when we do so, we have added to the lusciousness, the magnificenceness of life. The divine spark within you does not go out even after you've taken your last breath. So don't stop listening to those urgings. And if you've never started, begin listening to those urgings. Let them move you forward no matter how scary it may be because there is something greater going on and it is within you and it is loving you and it is bringing you forth. Thank you. I love you. All right, this is the part of our program where we pray on one of us. Come on down. Jenny, tell us what you'd like us to pray for. This is my year for healing. And right now I'm dealing with a very sore throat, uh, could be tonsillitis and a bad cough, if you've heard me over here. So I want that healed now. Eight to 10 folks come on up and lay hands on this lovely woman. That's right. And it's always there. All right. So everybody online and everybody here, let's take a deep breath and relax. And as we always do, we start within our own hearts. We feel that healing love energy within our hearts healing ourselves. We always start by healing ourselves with our own divine light. And then that light expands, that energy, that love healing throughout our entire bodies. Feeling that love healing energy. And then we expand it even further to feel throughout this entire room, the love, healing, energy of light of our spiritual family together, healing each other right here, 
right now. And now we take that magnificent energy and we flow it in through Ginny. We shower her with healing, loving light, knowing her to be healthy, vital, whole, complete, breathing easily and effortlessly. For God's healing knows no bounds. There is no time and space, but right now, as healing happens now. My soul sings out to you, my love. My soul sings out to you. My soul sings out to you, my love. My soul sings out to you. And I am so grateful for the power and presence of our spiritual family, the healing essence that Ginny is right now the healing essence that we all are for each other and for Ginny, so that she may feel this healing, loving light right now, knowing her healing is, and of course, inevitable, divine. And we release this knowing it to be so, as we all say together, so and so it is. And that is the power and presence of spiritual family, spiritual community when we come together and know the truth for each other. And I am so, so grateful and blessed to have you as my spiritual family and to be together and have each other. Thank you. All right. This is the part of the program where I ask you to take out what you're going to give. Hold it in your hand. Unfold it. Doesn't matter whether it's a dollar, ten dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. Deeds of property, gold mines, diamonds. Hold them in your hand. Because this is power, this is presence. We serve each other by what we give and contribute to allow the reception to come back in full circle. As we say, God is the source of all supply. Money is God in action. What I give, I receive multiplied abundantly. All that God is, I am, and so it is.